and we are live. Good participants. Are, wow, participants are flying up. I think that's the fastest I've seen participants go up for a while, so which is really good. Um, so uh, we got the team from Dunhumby with us today. I'm the only one that won't be doing a section of my own, so I'll do an introduction at the start. So uh, my name's Darren. Um, I head up the account management and customer success team here at Hacker Job. Today, obviously, we're joined by the, the team at Dunhumby, and what we'll be talking about today is early careers and the opportunities that are there at Dunhumby from that side. We've got a really good panel of, of people that have gone through various stages at Dunhumby, so it should be quite a, an exciting webinar. Um, while we wait for the attendees to, to keep flying up, so we'll leave it an extra minute or two so that people have the opportunity to join, I'm going to ask the usual water cooler type questions, but given no one can talk about the weather right now, ha has everyone got their tree up at the moment? What's... Uh, What's everyone's house looking like from a festive perspective? Pending. Pending. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, mine's up on the weekend. Okay, cool. So you're waiting a little while before putting it up? <laughs> yeah. My, my partner wanted to put ours up in like mid uh, mid November. I was like, there is no way it's going up in noon. <laughs> November. Yeah, my housemates were the same. Really? So, <laughs> yeah. so first of December and then it can go up. Yeah, I can't deal with like Mariah Carey and Michael Bublé in my house for like six weeks. It's just it's too much. I'm a Christmas baby. And I'm seeing in the I'm seeing in the chat that a few people have got their tree uh either trees up or they're ready to go. So uh we're not the only ones. Just while the event is going on, because there's so many people that are gonna be attending this, which is great. Um if everyone um uses the all panelists and attendees within chat um like uh like the, the guys are already doing but that means that everyone will see what is going on in that chat and you can all interact together and then if you've got questions towards the Dunhumby team if you use the q a section um we've got a dedicated 15 minutes at the end where we're answering all the q a's so feel free to drop all your questions in there and then once we've gone through the the first part of the, the presentation we'll make sure those are answered Oh, Tom Holmes put his uh, tree up yesterday, so uh, we're getting trees up. Stephen, do you want to do you want to kick us off? I think we've uh, we've had a couple of minutes, so if you want to kick us off, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. So, hi everyone. My name's Stephen Cooper. I'm a senior engineer here at Dunhumby. And to begin with, I'm going to take you through a quick introduction into Dunhumby, what we do, and what our role is in the retail se uh, sector. So Dunhumby is a, a data science company and we primarily focus on uh, customer data and we uh, work with, uh, in, within the retail sector. And we have been in this space for around 30 odd years helping our clients um, improve engagement with our customers. So with the retail select, uh, sector, we are getting a lot of data from them um, as you can imagine, from a variety of different sources. So if you think of Tesco, for example, we'll have data coming from the tills, promotions, um, what's uh, stopped on the shelves, and what's being delivered. So we have all this um, information. And what Dunhumbi's role in this is to take all that information and we then create actionable insights that we can deliver directly back to um, the customer to help them build kind of customer first strategies, which really put the customer at the heart of their decision making. What Dunhumby will also do is bring suppliers into the fold. So some of these suppliers such as Unilever, Coca-Cola, um, will help collaborate the, with retailers and suppliers to kind of further improve those customer first strategies. Um, by not only improving the customer's experience in the store when they're shopping, but also improving the relationship with the brands they're buying. And to take you through some examples of what that actually looks like, we aim to um, target customers at every step of the retail journey with our clients. So for example, at home, we want to make sure that when a customer is interacting with uh, one of our clients, they are getting the most up-to-date relevant information um, that is personalized to them. So for example, if they are looking up recipes for something to make, 
we can look at the past purchases at the store and make sure that we're looking at recipes that suit what they normally buy. We'll also look at improving the um, targeted marketing towards them. So we might get um, personalized coupons in the post that are money off the favorite brands or for new products from the brands um, that are arriving in shelves soon. And this works all the way into store where we wanna make sure that the store is stocked up with the correct products for the customers who shop in the store. And at the same time, the products are in the correct places and the promotions that are held on in store are relevant to the customer and they're executed at the right time to make sure they get optimal exposure to the targeted demographic. So to go through um, a few kind of examples of what this might look like. Um, if you go into a store such as Tesco, you might, for example, see products in certain places and just assume they've been put there based off of a retailer decision on an assumption. So I'm putting um, all the um, ready meals um, in the convenience stores because um, that's where people go just to pick up something on the way home. You might find um, the meal deals quite close to the door because that's what we'll see when we go in. But actually all of this is driven by data insights that Dunhumbi is creating. And one of the quick examples is substitution products. So for example, you go into the store to buy a two liter bottle of Coca-Cola and find out that it's not in stock. But what you'll find is that right above it, you'll see a six pack of Coca-Cola cans or right next to it, you'll see Pepsi instead. And this is all driven based off of the data we get from clients where we see the customers will end up buying those sort of products if that Coca-Cola two litre bottle isn't in stock. And it doesn't stop at kind of very generic insights. A very niche one, which I was told as soon as I joined as a graduate is with a cereal called Great Nuts, which is sold in Tesco. So it goes like this, um, Great Nuts isn't a well-known cereal and as a retailer will see it's not well bought. So they'll might remove it from the shelves. Now, what Dunhumby found is that it was actually a key product in those customers' shops. So what we'll end up doing is if they buy Great Nuts, they'll end up doing the rest of their shop in that store as well. And if it wasn't there, then we'll likely take their shop elsewhere. So those are the kind of insights that we end up delivering to our clients on a daily basis. So just moving on to where we're operating, we're currently uh, working with around 77 clients all over the world. We began with Tesco in back in the nineties where we helped them set up the Tesco club card scheme. And since then we've grown to be a global company. Um, we have offices um, all around the world as well, normally where we have clients and our offices are normally quite close to um, where they, where our clients are set up as well. From Dunhumby, we also have a lot of development offices around the world as well. So in the US, we have offices in Cincinnati. In the UK, we have offices in Manchester and London. We have a development office in Germany, in Berlin. And then we also have one in Gagawan in India, which is just outside Delhi. So as well as uh, the 77 clients, we also work with the majority of CPG clients, which is uh, consumer product um, goods. So that is people like Unilever, Nestle, Coca-Cola, pretty much any household brand that you might see in your normal uh, retail store. So with these many clients, we are bound to be processing a lot of data. And that's exactly what we do. We have around 500 or more uh, data scientists processing around 9 billion data records every week, um, generating insights which can either be delivered directly to the client or integrated into our products, um, improving that experience of a customer with both a retailer and the brands that they go and buy. Um, with our exposure as well, we are actually hitting around an estimated 1 billion shoppers globally 
and that number is actually growing with each client that we um, end up signing and working with. Um, that's something we want to increase further in years to come. So that is the introduction into Dunhumby and what we do. Um, I'm just going to talk now a bit around um, pretty much my journey into Dunhumby, um, which started around six years ago. So I graduated in 2014 from the University of Reading and I graduated with a 2-1 in computer engineering. And in that September, I joined Dunhumby as a graduate on a two-year rotational scheme. What really attracted me to Dunhumby to begin with was um, it was at a time when I knew I wanted to work in the technology space, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do with technology. And the graduate scheme at Dunhumby offered a broad range of possible um, venues I could actually go down and different skill sets I could actually interact with. Um, so it was perfect for me at that time in um, my career. So when I first joined, the first six months I spent in our international markets data engineering team who worked primarily on building and setting up um, ETL solutions, which is extract, transform and load and other data solutions for our non-UK and non-US clients. My second six month rotation ended up being in a team called Global Data Platforms. And that was the actual team that um, architected, designed and built the building blocks that those ETL and data solutions are made up of. Um, and it's here where I really found what really kind of interested me on a daily basis, where it really gave me the autonomy to kind of design and solutionize um, and actually build them and get it out to people who um, actually use the products that I build. And that is something that kind of I aspire to even now. It's when I'm kind of working at my best is just um, designing, building, getting into people's hands and kind of making their lives easier. And it was in this role where I kind of realized that that's where I kind of wanted to be. Um, and not soon after that, a permanent role was opened up for me in that team, uh, which I took. And I've been in that team ever since, really. Um, it's taken a different names over the years and the focus has kind of shifted to different uh, teams or different initiatives. Um, but it's still been the same team for around five years now. So just to break down what those five years look like, um, I started off um, in the first year with something which completely changed the company, which was an initiative called Tech Renewal, which essentially had the aim of replacing a lot of our old technologies, which were things like uh, SaaS and using Oracle technologies um, and replacing them with open source technologies. And that was mainly so our company could um, be competitive still going forward in the future. Um, we were on the old technologies for around 20 years. So it was time for an update, but it meant that our team was in the thick of it. So we began by building out Python frameworks um, to replace the old SAS ones. So building the new ETL and data solutions that data engineering will use. At near around the same time, we also were moving off our hosting all our solutions and products on our own infrastructure to moving it into Google's cloud. Um, and I was a major part in getting those first clients that we had and all their data moved into the cloud. I spent the next couple of years working with data engineering teams to help the rest um, of the clients move onto the cloud and really kind of mature the solutions and platforms that we'd built for them. Um, and it's here where our focus shifted to a different area of the company, but we had the same premise. We um, spent the next year building out Python solutions for um, another part of our company, which is the TAMS, which is the technical account management team, um, where they are the people who 
go and work with a client um, straight away when we're trying to sign them. So they get the first look at what data they have and what we can do with it. So we help to build Python solutions that they can use to speed up that process and that engagement with our clients. And that finally kind of brings me to where I am now. So I'm a senior engineer in the data science platform team. And we're made up of around 11 engineers uh, where we build, maintain, and support the cloud platform um, and applications that most of the data engineering and data scientists in the company use. So our stakeholders range around a thousand people in the business, all using the products, the platforms, the solutions that we are building on a daily basis. Um, with regards to the technologies that I'm currently working with, um, I've shifted from um, kind of SQL kind of based stuff and moved into a lot more kind of infrastructure and web ap application based technologies. So Kubernetes, Terraform, Python, Go, Docker, Spark, Hadoop, and Google's cloud. And it kind of goes on. So I'm pretty much in the thick of it that way. And kind of just to finish on my part, wanted to probably talk about why I'm still at Dunhumby uh, kind of over six years later. And it's pretty much because I guess, first of all, I'm in the thick of this decision-making that really affects how our business kind of operates and what we look like going forward. Um, and as I mentioned, with the exposure to building stuff that a thousand people are using, um, it's kind of a good feeling to see everyone being able to do the jobs a lot better based off of what you're building. Um, from a graduate perspective, I got exposure to a lot of the business that a lot of people don't really get to see. And it really improved my understanding of the business as a whole. So not just coming in as you know, a technical person, being able to code and program, I was able to understand the kind of the corporate side, the business side of it. So kind of what do our clients want? What do we actually kind of build and how they use it? Um, but all of that combined together, um, it's really challenging. And until I'll still be here as long as it's still challenging, which it's never not gonna be challenging to be honest. Um, so yeah. Um, that's my introduction. Obviously, if you have any questions, please raise them in the Q&A and I'm happy to answer. Um, but I'm going to pass over to Catherine, who's gonna to talk to you about her experience with Dunhumby. Cool, thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, so my name's uh, Catherine Spurs. Um, I've been at Dunhumby for just over two years now. Um, and I'm an, uh, a data science facing into the Tesco team. Um, so yeah, I, similar to Stephen, actually, I, I also studied at uh, Reading Uni, and that was um, the, um, I studied economics. Uh, I wasn't really sure which um, career path I wanted to go down with economics. You can kind of um, go down either like the finance route, accounting, um, and it was on my placement year that I was kind of introduced to Dunhumby and it sounded really interesting working with uh, different brands and retailers. Um, and it was something quite relatable that um, with retailers you uh, shop every day. So it was kind of using numbers that, that made sense to me. Um, so yeah, so when I went back to fourth year, I then um, looked into the graduate pr program at Dunhumby and applied and then joined in um, September 2018. So this was um, on the uh, technical grad scheme. Um, so it, the grad scheme consists of three six month rotations. Um, I won't go into so much detail of the first two as um, they actually weren't that uh, technical. Um, I was working within product management. So Dunhumby have a number of tools um, and I was working alongside the developers um, kind of figuring out what, what they need needed to build and um, speaking with the users of the tools as well. So the tools used by um, the clients um, 
within Dunhumby and then also the clients such as um, Coke and, and P&G and that, that kind of thing. Um, so it was in my um, third rotation, which I was able to choose. That was when I um, went into data science. Um, so um, yes, and that was facing into uh, Tesco. So it was specifically within the um, product team. So um, I would day to day, I would kind of analyze the data that um, Stephen spoke about. Um, so whether that was the transactional data um, or the uh, customer data that we get from shoppers scanning their club card. Um, we'd analyze this, draw our insight and then give um, give recommendations back to Tesco. Um, an example of a project I worked on um, quite recently was to do with, um, I don't know whether you've seen in Tesco, but you have the um, like 10 pound um, dine-in for two meal deal. Um, so their question to Dunhumby was, um, and to the data science team was, which product should we put within this meal deal? Um, so kind of, um, what I would do was um, write some code and that'd be either using Python or um, Spark and uh, write some functions maybe to draw out that data that we have and then analyze it. And I might be looking at um, what products are most frequently bought together um, and using some data science techniques such as clustering we're able to then um, group together these products and recommend them to Tesco. So that's kind of um, an example of, of something that I do. Um, yeah, so it's kind of working on what is best for the customer in, in terms of the products we put out there and also what is good for um, Tesco financially too. Um, and then just recently, I have moved into the f and team as well. So um, yeah, I've been around and worked in lots of different areas in Dunhumby. And that's due to the fact that you have that rotating aspect of the grad scheme. Um, I'd say one of my biggest achievements is, is kind of thinking back. Um, so I've been here for just over two years and the amount that I've learned from, from studying economics, I didn't have much um, coding experience or skills um, and a lot of a lot of what I've learned in terms of Python and that kind of thing um, has all been on the job and uh, Dunhumby offers some really good um, training courses around around the technology area um, and yeah really good support as well um, so yeah so my biggest achievement is probably learning um, I learned SQL as well. So it's kind of learning all the, those languages. Um, that's been really good skills to have. Um, I'd say my biggest challenge has been, um, although it's great for the rotational aspect of things, it might you might spend three months in a row and, and kind of settle in and then three months um, kind of getting used to what you do and, and actually maybe being quite good at it. And then having to start again um, and start your next six months somewhere else. Um, so it takes, um, that was kind of a big challenge that I I found um, was, yeah, having to restart again. But I mean, the amount of people that you, you meet and um, the amount you learn just uh, like triples when you're doing that rotational aspect. Um, so yeah, so overall, I would say, um, yeah, the grad scheme's been uh, I've really enjoyed the grad scheme um, and kind of outside of the data science world um, I'm part of the social committee as well at Dunhumby so that um, although there hasn't been too many things this year um, usually there are um, a few things and um, that the grads can host as well um, and we have some sports teams as well at Dunhumby so I'm part of the Dunhumby netball um so yeah I, I think that's it I'm not sure how long I've spoken for um but yeah I, I think I think that's it amazing 
Cool, I, I think I'm next. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Natalie. Um, I studied physics at uni, sorry, I'm grabbing my notes, so I'm looking at you guys. Um, I studied physics at uni and in my penultimate year, I did an internship at Dunhumby. Um, I assumed I'd be doing something data science-y, but during the interview process, I kind of got picked out and they were like, try software development, you might enjoy it. And I got put in one of the product teams. Um, the product team is named Sharp. Uh, and in that team, it was kind of, it was a little bit daunting because everybody was kind of over 40. I was the only woman on the team and uh, awkwardly kind of fitted in, uh, which was really nice. And I learned so, so much. So I managed to learn some C Sharp and build an internal tool, which is still used within the team. Um, within my three months internship, I think they're a little bit shorter now, um, but it was really, really amazing. Um, the reason I then came back to Dunhumby for my grad scheme was because I liked the learning environment. Like Dunhumby is such a supportive environment. I knew it would challenge me. And the more time I would spend in Dunhumby, the more I would learn, which you'll hear with the tech stack that I've now managed to build up with my rotations. Uh, so my first rotation in 2019 in, um, in Dunhumby, I don't know why I'm saying Dunhumby so much, uh, was in DH Assaultment. Um, and there, again, I was doing a software development role, which is what I really wanted to do because I wanted to feel out if that's the role that I could see myself in, because I wasn't quite sure. Like I did it in my internship, but you only you, you get tiny projects and you don't know, can I do this every day? Um, so I really paid attention to all the roles within the team. So it's an agile way of working. What does a product owner do? What do the manual testers do, the automation testers? Um, and which role works best for me within that kind of world? And I chose the software development side because I like the constant learning and picking up new skills. So the tech that I there picked up was the React work. So working on the front end side and using CSS. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but I also wanted to explore the back end world of technology, uh, which then I got my hands on in my second rotation, which was in the shop team, which is kind of like the OG product um, that Dunhumby has. Uh, and there, I mean, there's a lot of old technology, uh, but, and it's really, really confusing, but we have a super supportive team. So I got my hands on some SQL work and also worked a little bit with Python, which was um, us replacing, replacing some manual work um, and automating it, which was really cool. And I also did some automation testing work there and you worked with Selenium and C Sharp, um, which was the team in India. So um, we get the opportunity to work with teams globally which is really awesome because um, we get to meet people from all over the world. Uh, because of COVID, for my third rotation, I didn't manage to move to a different team. Um, they needed my support within the team that I was in. And uh, they had some opportunities which I wanted to pick up, which was React work and um, working on my backend skills, which is C Sharp and SQL. Uh, so that's what I'm focusing on now. I say I'm pretty confident with React now, which I should be after working with it for nearly a year. Um, which is also like my big achievement. Like I can pick up code reviews and point out mistakes which developers have made, um, which I shouldn't be happy about, but it kind of makes me chuffed that I can find them. Um, so my tech stack is my biggest achievement from C Sharp, SQL, Python, uh, React, JavaScript, TypeScript, Cypress, and the list goes up. That's not even all of them. And the fact that I managed to put that in in a year and a bit. Uh, I'm still baffed by it, and that's purely because of the support from my managers and the teams that I've been in that I could actually get all of those things done and, like, you know, being able to show my interests in different areas and actually getting the opportunities to get my hands on them. Um, then kind of outside of the tech world, um, I'm also part of uh, DH1, which has been an amazing support network because I have never been in a corporate kind of world nor do I know how to behave, um, no one in my family has. So being able to ask people who have been in similar situations, being the only female uh, BAME, like of ethnic minority dev within a team and asking people the questions that I wouldn't be able to ask anyone else and having that platform and support um, is definitely kind of helped me overcome my biggest like fear of going into a, a grad scheme. Um, I think that's all for me. I talk very fast, I apologize. Um, so I think up next is Ashley. Hello, uh, my name is Ash and um, I joined Dunhumby in September 2019, similar to Napoleon. So I came from an engineering background, having studied electrical engineering at University of Manchester. Um, I kind of find myself to enjoy the software development side a bit more 
during my year in industry, so which is why I applied to a software company. Um, the reason why I chose Don Humby is because of the structure of the graduate program, like you, because you get to rotate to different teams every six months for exposure to different tech stack. That is like really helpful when it comes to the end of the grad scheme and you want to choose what you want to specialize in. So that's something why I believe Dunhamby is a great company to choose. Um, the career I had with Dunhamby is that my first six months, I joined the platform team where I mainly did a lot of learning about TypeScript and React, um, but I mainly only focused on front end work. Um, so that was my first six months. And my second rotation was with the promotion analytics team. And I get to have lots of exposure on the back end side of the development. So .NET Core uh, for a microservice architecture. So that was really useful because now I can say that I have front and back end experience. And for my final rotation, which I'm currently in at the moment, is with the test automation team. So I get to help with automating a lot of their repetitive manual smoke tests using Cypress, which has been great so far. Um, my biggest challenge probably was during my first few months when I joined Dunhumby because obviously I came from an engineering background. There was a lot of stuff that I just didn't know and had to learn from scratch. Um, terminology was just getting thrown at me left and right and it was quite daunting but I finally got there in the end. So um, my biggest achievement was in my second rotation and I basically get to take ownership on a piece of work which required investigation and then implementing it into the current architecture, which has benefited the future of the project quite well. So that's me. I believe I'm gonna pass it on to Talia. Yeah, hi. So um, hi, I'm Talia. Um, I just joined Dunhumby this September. Uh, so I went through the entire kind of like uh, application process and everything. Uh, I had my assessment today during lockdown, um, all virtually. So I guess I'm kind of closest in the boat to kind of what you might be experienced in my experience, you apply. Um, I did a uh, undergrad in biology at Imperium. Um, my, and there I did my dissertation was using machine learning. So I kind of wanted to learn a bit more about that. I ended up doing a master's in computational biology again at Imperial. Um, and at the end of that, everyone else was either deciding data science or PhD. Uh, I decided I wanted to do data science. So I was looking around then at um, places to apply. And one of the ones that I found was Dunhumby. Um, the one main reason that I applied to Dunhumby was because it's partly because of the rotational aspect. So getting to experience different things. Um, I knew I wanted to work in data science, but I didn't know exactly what in data science I wanted to do. Um, but also I like the idea of um, working with retail data. Um, I, working in biology was very different, the kind of data that I worked with. And um, uh, yeah, the idea of working with retail data, something that really excited me learning. It was a bit more practical um, than kind of data that I'd originally worked with. Um, so currently within Dunhumby, I am my first rotation and I'm working with the WHOU team within the DH lab. So basically uh, Dunhumby has a, a small number of like internal startups within this uh, part of the company called DH Labs. Who you itself works is a app, uh, receipt scanning app. So basically uh, it, the top eight retailers in the UK, so Tesco, Sainsbury's, all of those, you can scan the uh, receipt that you get from there and you earn points for doing that. And then we use that receipt data to um, gain insights about customer spending and things like that, market share and stuff like that. So. Um, Within the data science, with data science within the team, I've basically been helping to uh, clean the data for use within the products that we're starting to build, um, and I'm also helping them learn a lot more about the actual users we have from the app. So, looking through, I'm producing analysis and producing dashboards as well. 
so I've been learning things like within my I originally already knew Python I'd already le also learned R but we don't really use that within the within the company so much um, but at least within my team but I'm pr primarily using um, Python I taught myself SQL within a couple of days um, when I first started and they're kind of like the primary languages that I now use um, so yes there's things like the stuff that I've been doing this week are looking at uh, analyzing fraudulent users that we have using the app. So, um, so things like that, trying to find out who they are, how we can target them to stop their fraudulent use of the app and things like that. Um, my biggest achievement was probably producing a methodology within my, my first project within the team was producing a methodology to estimate the total spent. Um, if we suspect that the total spent we've got coming for, in from the app is incorrect. So because we use an OCR, basically built onto the back of our app. Um, it, pro it processes the receipts and tries to um, identify all of the products, all of the prices um, on the receipts, and then also the total amount spent. And often it, it happens a lot with Asda receipts because uh, the way that they're just printed, we tend to get kind of messy data coming out of that. So I was working a lot on cleaning all that data up. So producing like uh, logistic regression models and things like that that would help with um, coming up with actually a more accurate depiction of what we saw the prices that um, of the transactions people provided to us. Um, my biggest challenge is probably being getting feedback in terms of when you're in an office, which I've never been to the actual Dunhumby offices ever, um, you kind of are able to like go around your desk and show people like your work and be like, hey, can you give me some feedback on this or can you give me some feedback on that? That is much harder to do when you're chatting to people via like a, a webcam. So I've actually been, it's kind of really pushed me to become better at communicating. So I'm becoming more kind of uh, constantly, if I, if I don't understand something or I don't know why something's not working, just taking like a quick screenshot and sending it over to my line manager or one of the other people on our team, or even there's like a, Internally, we have like a technology community um, that you can basically send things into and they'll be like, help, how do I do this? And there's always people willing to help you and kind of get back to you. So that's something that's been really useful. It's a really nice supportive environment, um, especially in terms of like learning new languages and things like that. Um, and also in helping you to understand the kind of terminology that they use within the um, company. So a lot of retail terminology just seemed completely alien to me when I first started a couple of months ago and actually I was kind of really quickly picking up on stuff like that so yeah I guess I'll pass it on to Vera now. Amazing thanks Talia um yeah just to introduce myself um, my name is Mira and I look after the um, early careers opportunities at Dunhumby so um firstly I'm just going to try attempt to uh, share my screen and I'll just cover off um a few points about what the programs look like, um, what the application process looks like as well, and some top tips for applying. So everything that I'm going to cover off um, firstly will be um, focused on the UK and I'll cover off um, some international um, opportunities um, as well. So firstly focusing on our summer internship. So this is a program aimed at penultimate year undergraduates. Um, so the hope is that you would come onto the summer internship, um, hopefully do really well, and at the end of the programme we can offer you a place on one of our graduate programmes for the following year. So we offer internships in the UK um, for data science, engineering um, and commercial, obviously the focus here being kind of some of, more, some of our more technical areas. Um, this is an eight week programme starting in July. You'll be placed in one team working on um, a, a project, which will you'll then share and present back to your team and leaders at the end of the placement. Um, throughout the eight weeks, there's um, multiple touch points and support from managers, team, a buddy who's with you for the eight weeks as well, um, and plenty of training and development. So they'll give you access to Udemy to allow you to um, develop further programming languages and skills and some internal training as well. Um, our graduate programmes are um, 
slotted into the same areas of data science, engineering and commercial. This is an 18 month programme, which is rotational. So you'll get to spend six months in, in three different teams within those, those tracks, um, which will give you the ability to kind of explore a few teams before then kind of deciding um, what you have enjoyed at the end of the programme. And then um, I will support you with kind of finding your, your permanent home. Um, and again, similar to the internship, but over kind of a more extended period of time, um, you're given a lot of training and development internally, access to Udemy and, and plenty of support along the way um, throughout those 18 months. Um, in terms of the application program uh, process for the programs I've mentioned for the UK, which we have applications open um, now for those. It's an applicate, a very short application form with a CV uh, submission. Um, there have been a couple of questions about um, C, um, cover letters, so it's not actually uh, mandatory. Um, so it's just the CV we would be looking for. Um, you'll then move on to a technical test. Um, so you'll have an option of choosing um, a few different programming languages to complete a, a coding challenge. You'll then receive an invite if you've been successful from that test to complete a, a numerical and verbal reasoning test. Um, after that, there'll be a, a pre-recorded video interview. And then finally, um, and I've put virtual in brackets, um, an assessment center. So hopefully this is in person, but there is every likelihood that this could be virtual as well, um, probably following on from the experience that, that Talia mentioned. So this includes a, a case study that you'll um, be allowed to prepare beforehand, which will then present in an interview slot, um, a competency-based interview and uh, a group activity. Um, so in terms of the, those programs that I mentioned, um, I just kind of put down some top tips. So um, making sure that your CV is, is relevant. So you're trying to highlight um, as much of your relevant experience as possible. So any programming languages that you've studied as part of your course, anything you've done outside in your extracurricular um, activities or any positions of leadership that you've had are all great to make sure that you're including on your CV. Um, our Dunhamby values are, are pretty much what, what we live and breathe. So um, you should find these on our website, but um, I guess through throughout the stages when you're working through the interview stage or the video interview, um, just keep these in mind because um, they're very, um, like the backbone of, of how we operate in the business. Um, can take some time to conduct research. And really, I guess this applies for any application you make, not just Dunhamby. So I just wanna uh, put that out there taking some time to conduct research. Um, and I've, I've also seen a few questions um, coming through about experience, um, especially if you're a summer intern. Um, it's not vital to have experience. Obviously we, we understand that you are at university. So it's really about showcasing motivation um, and hopefully we can get that through um, some of the processes that you'll, you'll go through through the application process. Um, I think there's also been some questions about um, international opportunities. So at the moment, we are um, looking for interns in a couple of locations. So um, South America, Brazil, in China, and um, we will have opportunities in Berlin next year and very likely Gagaon as well. Um, so some graduate opportunities there. Um, if there are any other locations that I haven't mentioned, it's likely that there may not be um, for next year, but I would suggest just keeping an eye out on the, our careers page and we have an early careers specific page that you can have a look at. Um, but that's just some of the locations that we are um, going to be recruiting for, um, including the UK. Um, so I know we've got a lot of questions to hopefully get through. So what I'll do is uh, pass back to Darren and we can kick off our um, Q&A. Amazing. I feel like I've, I've been silent for the last 40 minutes. She's been very, very nice. Um, I often don't get to that on these webinars. Um, so there's been some really good questions during it. I guess the, the first one I'm going to throw, I'll, I'll throw it at um, both sides of the, the, the team. Um, so what's the differentiation between the uh, the engineering graduate scheme and then the data science graduate scheme? Like, what is the, What's the different skills you learn in one compared to another? I don't know who wants to answer Yeah, um, so the engineering scheme is um, predominantly looking at software engineering. So it will include some rotations within our data engineering team, media engineering, and um, the team that Navlene's currently sitting in. So that's our shop team. And um, we're, we're 
at Ashley's um, team currently sits in as well. So mainly a software engineering scheme and our data science, again, looking at machine learning and covering some of the experiences that Catherine um, and, and Talia mentioned. So um, I would suggest having a look on our website at the different uh, at the job descriptions. Um, hopefully that does help um, to kind of um, make the difference between the two. Amazing. Um, and there's a question around um, how education affects the opportunities. So if someone uh, do your graduates need to come from uh, a BSc in a, a master's background or can they come through um, different um, different areas as well? Like return as yeah. well. Yeah, um, ideally um, a BSc um, would, would be great to see and that can be from um, any background. Obviously Catherine came through the program um, studying an economics degree. Um, so if, but however, if there is any um, experience you've got in a programming or coding that you may have done outside of your, your degree, that would be great to see. Um, having a STEM degree um, does help um, because you would have likely studied maybe some programming or coding during university. But if you haven't, then it'll be great to see where you've been able to gather those skills outside of your course as well. Amazing. Um, I'm going to throw this one at Naveline and, and Stephen. Um, so I'll give you a bit of a rest, Mira, because you've, uh, you've spoken for about 20 minutes now. Um, both of you spoke at, at some sections about some of the technology that you've used or you've, you'd like to use. So what is the, do you want to give us a bit of an overview of the Dunhumby tech stacks? There's been a couple of questions during the, the last 10 or 15 minutes on, on the tech stack. And Stephen, we'll go to you first and then we'll go to Naveline. Yeah, it's quite expansive, really, depending on the team you're in. So my team is currently dealing a lot with um, a lot of infrastructure and a lot of kind of application building. So you, the Kubernetes, the Docker, that sort of stuff is all building kind of infrastructure in the cloud. Um, we use Python quite a lot, and that's used to do a lot of the automation that we kind of build into our products. Um, but you will see us using bits of React to build our applications. Um, and as I mentioned, interacting with Google Cloud, uh, we need stuff like Terraform to actually go away and deploy our kind of um, our infrastructure. Um, speaking about the data engineering teams, because they've got that experience as well, they use Python with Spark. So for data processing, we use Hadoop throughout the company. So Spark is our kind of main kind of uh, software to use to interact with Hadoop and do a lot of the analytics we use. Um, but going across the whole company, you might have heard like a lot of different kind of technologies coming um, from Ashley and Nadleen. Um, and it, like I said, it depends on the, um, the team you're in. So data science, um, I saw someone asking about R. R is definitely used. Um, we use a software called Jupyter who do notebooks, which give you like an interactive way of running code. Um, and in there we have, as I said, use of R, but primarily using Python. Um, but we're introducing different ways of uh, different libraries and different pieces of software that interact with Jupyter and um, Python to build that out. Um, but yeah, on the product side, we use a lot of .NET, uh, C Sharp, React. Um, different teams will actually have a different tech stack based on either legacy software um, that they've built in the past or just preference really based on skill sets. Um, I'll shut up now and Nivlin can, <laughs> can go. I'm going to be like the nice cop here and say, don't worry if you don't know any of them. Um, the whole point is that if you come from a STEM background, you have the right sort of um, think logical thinking or, you know, you have the capacity to learn these things. And once you get your head around the way something's structured, you can pick these tech languages up very quickly. It's just like the syntax is different. Once you've get the logical aspect of it, it's very easy to pick up and you have got experts around you. So if you know Python, for you to pick up JavaScript will be so much easier because someone in the team will be able to say, oh, this is how you do it in JavaScript. This is how you would do it in this language or so on. So don't be scared away when I say, well, my tech stack is this big. You learn that quite quickly because once you get that logical thinking of way if something is built, it's super easy. Perfect. And uh, there was, there's been uh, another question off the back of that. And Stephen, given you were speaking about the, the data engineering piece and uh, what data piece as a whole, it might be interesting for you to answer this one. Are, are you using TensorFlow and, and PyTorch internally? 
So TensorFlow is something that we started to look into um, as it's also part of Google's kind of platform really in the cloud. Um, what's the other technology, sorry? Uh, PyTorch. PyTorch. Um, I'm not sure about PyTorch. We've started to look into a lot of dashboarding technologies at the moment to um, provide to our data scientists. So we started looking at Redash, Jupyter, have got something that I've recently just started implementing stuff for, which is Vola, um, which is a way of kind of building out in the background all your kind of Python code to create plots and everything. Um, but it gives you a nice kind of user interface for people to kind of interactively um, well, interact with these kind of graphs um, with the idea that we can send these to our clients or kind of present these to our clients and actually um, kind of interactively show them based off of you know the data that's been fed through it. Nice. Um, yeah. Cool. But from uh, a sorry, just from an ML perspective, we are using libraries such as Pandas, NumPy, Scikit-Learn is one that's being used quite a lot um, within the data science community. Amazing. Um, I'm going to throw a question at Catherine and, uh, and Ashley because they've uh, had a bit of a, a break here. Um, I, I think what the, the question on everyone's mind is going to be, how has things changed um, as a result of the, the dreaded C word? So obviously everyone's working from home at the moment, but uh, Tyler, it's hard to throw it at you because you've not worked in the office. So uh, for Ashley and, and Catherine, we'll start with you, Ashley. Um, how has your experience changed at Dunhumby as a result of um, working from home? So at the beginning, um, it was slightly difficult to just try and ask questions because you can always turn to your left and your colleagues right there to just go, oh, do you want to help me have a look at this? What's I don't know what to do with this. But now, as time goes on and like you do everything online now, it's kind of easier because you can just go, hey, can I uh, have a quick call? And, and like Dunhumby have lots of good collaboration tools like Teams, Miro, that you can just you can just see what's everyone doing or you can do live code share so um it hasn't been too bad lately so it does get better Catherine? yeah um i'd say the same um yeah it's kind of something i got used to like when march uh came um but it's it's been okay i actually managed to go into the office in like august september time when we when we could so dunhamby have been really good at that and saying if you if you do need to come in and you haven't got a great setup at home um you can kind of put in a request to to work from the office um so i know a few people have been going in um for a few months now um and i was kind of going in once a week um for a bit but um, yeah, it's kind of something that you, you get used to, and um, but I am looking forward to going back. <laughs> uh, I think there's a lot of people, even in the hacker job office, that can't wait to go back into the office. Just a bit of flexibility on that side. M Mira, quick question for, for yourself. In terms of the, the business setup, what tools have you been using internally at Dunhubby to support? Because obviously Ashley and Catherine have given us a bit of an idea about the changes and how they've adapted, but what tools have you brought into the business to help people with that adaption? Um, yeah, great question. I think it's been a bit of a learning curve for all, but probably um, the hardest for, for new graduates who, who have had to come in and for um, graduates, uh, for example, Navleen and Ashley, who had just started a new rotation, so they'd just met their, their new team and all of a sudden you have to be at home. I think one of the easiest things to just bear in mind is that it's it's affected everyone so it doesn't feel like anyone's suffering in, in isolation um i think the the great um thing is that being able to use teams i think ashley touched on this point like sharing screens mirroring um being able to do that so um yeah and along the way we've had probably went through that phase of quiz overload and, <laughs> and all sorts and just yesterday we had a kind of end of year um virtual Dunhumby um kind of celebration party um so I think just in in these ways we're just trying to figure out yeah the best ways of still being able to collaborate but I think we've we've done pretty well so far I'm, uh, I'm grateful for all of you attending given that there's probably a few heavy heads this morning uh, after the after the Christmas party um, I hope it was a good one um, and then there's a um, there was a, a question around um, opportunities for people that come from boot camps because we spoke earlier about um, ideally someone come from a, a D degree type background. So if one, someone comes from a boot camp type background, is there another way that they could get an opportunity 
um, to, to look at um, chances in the business? Yeah, absolutely. So we've started looking at um, apprentices at Dunhamby as well. So that's a great opportunity for um, anyone who's maybe at the slightly more junior end um, of, of their journey to think about opportunities. So um, these kind of come up um, slightly more of, a, of an ad hoc basis just for when we have the demand in the business. So I would definitely suggest looking at our careers page um, and we do have um, entry level positions coming out throughout the year as well so I would say just keep checking out our careers page. Nice um, and then there's been a couple of questions on the on uh, coding challenges during that uh, during that process so during the, the interview process and I know we were speaking about it the other day so do you want to just give insight into what that process looks like from a coding side? Yeah, so um, you'll have the ability to choose between five different programming languages um, based on one that you feel uh, more comfortable with. And these five will be um, ones that yeah, we use quite regularly in the business. Um, so you'll be able to select one and then um, you'll have a, um, a challenge to use that language um, in, in that um, one hour time frame. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, and uh... I guess question to uh, to the to the panelists outside of yourself and me, Mira. What some of the technologies that you um, that you foresee Dunhumby will, will bring into the business? Are you quite excited about the opportunity to um, to play around with? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll chuck it to Talia first, and then we'll we'll go around. Uh, I guess uh, things on like the in the team that I've been working in. Uh, so obviously we use Python and SQL mostly. Um, but also in terms of like data science. So I've been learning all of our stuff we do in BigQuery, so in the Google Cloud data platform. So uh, I've been learning um, things like the uh, data studio, Google Data Studio, but also um, we're starting to build products in Power BI and things like that for clients and stuff like that. So we're kind of constantly um, expanding that way um, and looking at more dashboarding stuff. So for producing dashboards in Python using a like a libraries called like Dash and things like that, uh, stuff that we're also kind of trying to move to further towards as well. So because we we have the raw data and all that kind of stuff, but actually looking at ways that we can visualize that and also try and represent it to clients and stakeholders is kind of like the the main thing that we're progressing on. Perfect. And I've just realised what time we're on. It it shows how much time flies when uh, when things are going well. Navalin, you're you're going to get the you're going to be the last person that I'm going to throw the the question to. What technology uh, are you quite excited about that potentially Dunhamby will bring to the business in the next year or so? Um, so we recently signed a partnership with Microsoft um, and we have loads of opportunities for us to learn Azure. Um, as for example, we saw uh, most of our team, I think the product team had to sit an Azure 900 exam and we all got to learn Azure and there's loads of opportunities available on that, which I'm quite excited for. Yes, amazing. Um, we got to the end of our time. I'm mindful that there's two minutes left. So uh, I want to give that the, the opportunity to thank all the panellists for uh, being here today. What we'll do is um, we've got someone from Hacker Job in the background. And what we'll do is collate all the information and all the questions. And we'll make sure that these go out. Um, there was questions earlier on whether this will be sent out. So I did put it in the chat earlier, but this will be hosted on the Hacker Job YouTube. And I'll make sure that um, Daisy from our end, our head of marketing, sends out a link so that everyone can access it afterwards if they need to. Um, thank you very much to the panelists again. And thank you very much for the attendees.